Um, so first up, we have Tiffany Longworth, who you got to meet yesterday. Um, as she noted, she's site, site reliability engineer at Puppet. What she did not happen to mention was that she also organizes the DevOps Days Portland conference, uh, which I love bouncing ideas off of her because she's so creative. Um, in addition, she is also the one that introduced Ignite Karaoke to us last year, in which we're hoping to keep up with that tradition. So uh, without further ado, Stephanie. So we all know that person who will just indiscriminately forward us every cat picture they've ever gotten. While this, by definition, is cute as F, uh, we don't get those and go, man, they're so productive. And this leads to us not being uh, willing or inclined to share happy things with each other at work, where we spend so much time and share so much stress. And I'm here to tell you that we can do this for business purposes. When I started at Puppet, I was scheduling the consultants, and I quickly found out they had strong opinions about where they wanted to go and where they didn't want to go. So I put their preferences in a spreadsheet, and I was done. Kidding, life gets in the way. So uh, the person who hates going to Texas in summer had to go to Texas in summer. I started taking notes about what kind of lols they like. Are they a sarcastic lol person? Are they a baby kitten person? Maybe they have a thing about baby bats. Uh, and so when I had to send Zach down to Texas, I was like, I know you don't want to go there. I know you're going to be miserable, but you're the only one who can do it. And I will send you baby bats every day. Uh, in solidarity. And he still had to go and he still hated it, but morale improved drastically because people knew they cared about us. Uh, after, oh man, I am going fast. All right. So after sending all these baby bats and stuff, uh, I moved on to another job where I was wrangling so many projects, uh, just like concurrently. And I would send these updates weekly. And these things were just massively long. We're talking like terms of service levels of length, and nobody was reading that stuff. So there was important information, and I needed people to be reading these updates. So I started by shortening my stuff from being a few sentences for each project to one line that linked to Jira or Confluence or wherever we were storing the fuller data. And I would also include links to images or GIFs that maybe represented my true feelings about how <laughs> service was going or a project was going. My progress reports got red. Like, you could see these GIFs appearing throughout the rest of the company, uh, which meant that people knew what they needed to know. So you can also use Whimsy to get your stuff read. Now, speaking of vendors, uh, we use a lot of tools. We just saw that Zebia Labs periodic table and like fell over from information overload. Uh, so we use a lot of tools, and we often use them in very creative ways. Uh, so who here likes someone telling them that the work they've done is crap? OK, so <laughs> nobody likes this. <laughs> so think about this when you're making a support ticket. Uh, because they're probably on the other end going like, what the hell are you doing to our product? Uh, so when you are stressed out by a tool, take a minute for yourself, find something adorable and calming or funny or uplifting, and when you make that ticket, be like, hey, I'm probably doing something really wackadoodle. I need this kitten. Maybe you need this kitten too. Uh, this is going to introduce a whole new dynamic with your vendors, and they will like remember you and actually want to work with you, uh, and you might become kind of famous at their companies? Uh, ask me how I know. Uh, and then the fourth and final way to inject whimsy that I'm gonna tell you about today is bubbles. So we've all been there, that email comes in, and you just see red, like, that is the worst time to respond to that email because you really want to tell that person exactly what you think. And you, you shouldn't. So I take, you're in fight or flight mode and you're really probably in fight mode. Grab your emergency bubbles, label them emergency bubbles and leave them on your desk. Uh, I like to take my bubbles and walk around the floor, like the entire office blowing bubbles. The first thing that's gonna happen is everyone that you see is gonna go, oh, bubbles. 
And so everyone's smiling, which is nice, but the second thing that's happening is you're engaging your parasympathetic nervous response, which is the opposite of fight or flight. It's the rest and digest. So all that oxygen flooding into your body as you are blowing a massive number of bubbles into an office is actually going to calm you down and make you realize that maybe someone else can respond to that email and make that problem not yours. Uh, summary slides. It's up here for 30 seconds if you want to take a photo. But what we covered today was you need to tactically deploy your memes uh, to improve team morale. Uh, put Easter eggs in your docs, in your updates, and use gifts of gratitude constantly for anything, and then use bubbles to chill TF out.